Hello, fun. My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Midwest Regional in Chicago with the 8096 Cash Money. They've already had a solid season, serving as the first pick of the fifth seed of the Lions at the Wisconsin Regional. Here at Midwest, they're looking to be even stronger, currently being ranked two as we quickly approach the Alliance selection. They have an incredibly powerful robot, Snoop Hogg, with a bunch of unique features and automation that allow them to be dominant on the field. Plenty more about this coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, now we're heading over to Caden and Adi to talk about their mechanical systems. Uh, yeah, sure. We can start off where the note starts in the robot. It starts with our intake. Um, can we? De uh, we can deploy our intake. Wow. It's in, uh, it's probably right. Can you? Yeah. So our so the way the note works is it passes through and it passes into the conveyor, um, and from there it can either go to the shooter or it can go up to score amp. The conveyor raises up into amp prep. Yep. And it rotates cardinals on depending on where we zero. So this is where in the field. Um, it can also go into climb prep, uh, which crushes our note for dropping. Um, yeah. Um, and we can exit all these prep states by going home. And Adi, do you want to talk a little about how it goes to the shooter? Okay, so once it reaches our conveyor, it's stored in there while we reach the other side of the field, which then it's handed off to the shooter, uh, which uses a top bottom design. We also have the fly wheels on the, or the wheels on this side um, at about double the uh, surface speed of the other side. So we're adding a significant amount of spin, which helps with their note stability. Uh, independent of what position we're shooting from, the shooter speed is the same. The only thing that changes is the angle because our shots are straight enough and consistent enough due to the speed and spin. Yep, very interesting. Oh, yeah. uh, one thing I'm almost curious about is how you come up with design. It's packaged very well and very uniquely. Uh, is any information about like the design process that led you here? Well, when we were first uh, coming up with our goals for the season, we one thing that we definitely knew we wanted to do was trap. But we didn't want to do at the expense of uh, expense of um, our amping. So one thing we did was we incorporated our trap and amp in the same mechanism. So um, and in case our trap breaks, our amp will always work independently of our trap. Uh, um, the way it works is that when we trap, our conveyor comes up into climb prep, um, and when it grabs the chain, can we do climb prep. So here on the road, there are these hooks that grab the chain and bring it down. And as you can see, we have a shooter pivot to shoot from multiple angles, as Adi was talking about earlier, um, where this this comes here and grabs a chain and it, ro it pivots up and pulls down on the chain, which allows our conveyor to come raise back up with the robot. And it has a note here and it, it forces it into the trap with our rollers. There's, our trap is very consistent this year. With, um, and I thought it was very cool how we packaged our shooter and our the how we grab the chain to one subsystem along with our amping and trapping inputs along with our hooks for flying. Uh, other, uh, we were able to save on motors by incorporating a shooter pivot. And um, another thing that we were able to do was with our intake packaging, we have um, it sits above the conveyor, so we need to deploy it when we're going up with the amp prep and stuff like that. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so a big difficulty when we were packaging everything so tightly is the interference between the subsystems. Um, for example, when our shooter, or not shooter, conveyor is moving up and down, it conflicts with the uh, intake when the intake is in the up position. So when moving the elevator up and down, um, we clear those zones by moving the intake slightly forward. Um, same thing with the shooter. If the shooter is in the fully upright position, uh, we cannot lower the elevator. So all those collisions are accounted for in the code. Um, and that allows us to package everything so tightly, but not have to worry about collisions. Um, another big thing with the robot was the architecture we designed it around of being able to do a lot of functions such as a trap, 
but not compromising our ability to cycle to the speaker effectively. And that's why we integrated our climb mechanism into our conveyor. So we have no separate mechanism that's taking up more space or weight on the robot. And it's not a separate mechanism that could fail and interfere with other functions of a robot. Absolutely, that's very cool. Now we're we'll headed over to Azure to talk about their software and automation systems. Yeah, so one of the things that we really tried to do with this robot was automate really as much as possible. It makes it easier for the driver, of course. It makes stuff faster and more accurate than having to align with anything manually. So, for example, all of the motions that you've been seeing to go to the prep states are automated. So if you go home, that's all just one button. You can see how the convey the intake waits to come all the way in until the elevator is below. And we have the same thing on the other side with the shooter. So we've defined clear interference zones for the various subsystems. We have some pretty advanced vision. So we are using the April tags on the speaker to both align the robot with the speaker and get the distance to the speaker and then use the distance with an interpolation table to get our shooter pivot angle. So we can shoot from just about anywhere one could feasibly shoot. And even if we can't see the April tags, it uses the robot odometry to guess where the speaker is. And we found, while that's not perfect, of course, it's much better than aligning manually, and it usually works quite well. And then we use the trap April tag to automatically align with the chain where we want it to be towards the end of a match once we're ready to climb. We're also using a, one of our limelights for note vision. So I'm not gonna automatically drive while we're in the pit, but if you go to the automatic intaking, you can see it sees the note and it will automatically follow the note. And this is all automatic. The driver's doing none of this. Go home. Um, and so in a real match, we can use that to intake notes much faster. And it's the, the rotation, of course, is automatic. The driving is manual. So as he pushes on the stick, the robot would drive. So that means if it's not seeing the right note or anything, it's very easy to just stop. We won't get in any collisions or anything. And we have manual intake. It's very interesting. One thing I'm almost curious about is, did you have any issues implementing that? It's a lot of automation, a lot of pocketing. I know pocketing can be more complicated. Do you have any problems getting that to work or to just kind of work from the get-go? Um, for the most part, no, because we took a lot of time beforehand to think about like, what's every possible edge case that a robot might be in, make sure that we're safe. There's a few instances, especially in early testing, where we had to quickly disable. So you always have somebody on the disable button. The biggest issue that we found was that because of how our climb logic works, if we do the actual climb button, but there's not a chain there, the shooter pivot will like run too far backwards and uh, that could cause some damage. So we just accounted for that by saying if it's 20 degrees past where it should be, then like stop and go back. But that was something that we periodically ran into a few times and has the potential for damage. But we implemented a pretty simple fix and it's been fine since. Nice. Well, Cash Money, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure meeting with you. The robot's incredible. And with your possibly being the second seated captain, I think you have great prospects going into Alliance selection. Thank you. Finals. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for talking to us. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.